I have a friend. She's rather big. Let's call her Mary. Since I'm obsessed with body chemistry and understand the problem with being overweight is not aesthetic, but biochemical, I find her fascinating. You see, despite being morbidly obese, metabolically, she is in perfect shape. Her blood pressure is normal. Her cholesterol levels are normal. Her sugar levels are normal. Her triglyceride levels are normal. Now, I won't go so far as to say that she is in perfect health. She has a multitude of issues, but her complaints all revolve around aches and pains, brought on by the fact that she is carrying a seriously heavy load. They are not metabolic. Now, Mary is big all over. This is so very different from my body. My legs look like I'm an Olympic athlete. Pretty much no butt to speak of. My bigness is all round my belly. Officially, I'm normal weight, with a BMI that comes in under 25, which is the official cutoff for fatness in white people. The numbers are a little lower for some ethnic groups. Unfortunately, despite my perfect BMI score, metabolically speaking, I teeter on the edge of metabolic derangement, the only thing that keeps me from sliding off the precipice to some serious health issues is continued vigilance. I watch what I eat, when I eat, with whom I eat. I exercise regularly. I manage my light exposure. I get enough sleep. You get the picture. Now, on the plus side, this is why I know so much about how to create better body chemistry. And why I do what I do. I want to empower people to avoid metabolic mayhem. So when it comes to Mary, I have to confess, I am a little, actually, a lot jealous. Part of me thinks those fat cells will eventually catch up with her. It's just a matter of time. And this is what she believes too. So she is always dieting. It's three kilograms off and then four kilograms on. But as I've watched her expand and contract over the years, I've come to the conclusion that this is very unlikely to happen. She has some kind of magic that protects her. And I wish I knew what it was so I could get a little. Now, this is not what your average health guru believes. They're pretty sure the excess fat cells do catch up with you sooner rather than later. So, is it true? Does obesity always kill? Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we probe whether if you're seriously fat and healthy, you're doomed to cross a line and become metabolically deranged. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heffalumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, a group of researchers from Washington University decided to test the theory. The team enrolled a group of heavyweights into their study, and instead of cutting calories, they fed them more, much, much more. So they got heavier and heavier. Now, in the group of heavyweights they signed up for their study, they identified two distinct groups. There were heavyweights with metabolic troubles, that is, people showing signs of metabolic syndrome, and then there were people who were 100% metabolically healthy, people like Mary. The criteria the team used to decide whether the heavyweight was normal or in metabolic trouble was the presence or absence of fat inside the liver. Now, this is a biomarker for insulin resistance. Fat in the liver signals excess fat is no longer being stored exclusively in adipocytes. Despite the differences, they were equally fat. 
the two groups had very similar BMIs at the start of the study. The calorie loading saw all the heavyweights get heavier. And believe it or not, it wasn't as easy as you might think. On average, they increased their weight by around 6%. Now, most of the weight gain was indeed fat. Fat mass increased by approximately 10%. The consequences of the weight gain, however, were markedly different. In the metabolically unhealthy guys, they became more unhealthy. A variety of health parameters slipped. Most notably, their insulin levels, triglycerides, and blood pressure went up. Contrast this with the metabolically healthy guys. They remained metabolically healthy, and their health parameters stayed within the normal ranges. Actually, they barely changed. It's so unfair. So, not all obese people are metabolically in trouble. Extra fat cells does not always equate with more trouble. It's an inconvenient truth. BMI, or body mass index, is currently the number that carries an awful lot of weight when it comes to classifying people. A normal BMI is somewhere between 18 and 25. Anything above this is considered abnormal and problematic, and the higher the number, the more trouble you're in. So a BMI above 30 puts you in the category of obese, and a BMI above 35 makes you morbidly obese. But being overweight or obese does not automatically mean you're metabolically unhealthy. It just means your doctor is expecting trouble heart disease, diabetes, these are all on his radar. And if you visit with a minor problem, his first response will be lose some weight. What about skinny people? We've all heard the stories. Joe Soap was skinny. He ate right. He worked out. And last week, he died from a heart attack. How could this be? Well, his BMI betrayed him. You see, when he visited the doctor, the doctor assumed that he was okay because the doctor believed obesity causes insulin resistance. This study hints it's a lot more complicated. What if obesity is not the cause of insulin resistance? Instead, insulin resistance is the cause of obesity. The implications of this are mind-boggling and far-reaching because it raises the question, what causes insulin resistance? Genes are only part of the story. Is it bad bugs, circadian disruption, specific chemicals? Could it be the way we're processing our food? Or maybe cell phones and cell phone radiation are to blame. Is it all of them? Or something completely different? BMI actually tells you very little. The reality is that a percentage of skinny people have seriously defective metabolism. Now, the exact percentage probably varies according to where in the world you live, but it's generally around 30%. On the flip side, a percentage of overweight obese people have excellent metabolism. Again, the exact number varies and often depends on your definition of metabolic health. But it's estimated that around 30% of people who, on first glance, would be considered heart attacks waiting to happen, in fact, have happy, healthy hearts and blood vessels. Now, to be fair, if you look at the official criteria for metabolic syndrome, BMI is not there. Waist circumference is, but this detail is often lost in translation. Fat cells are not actually the health risk. They are needed and necessary. Granted, you probably don't want too many of them. Being overweight or obese is not a fun experience. But when it comes to creating better body chemistry and enjoying better health, 
it's important to remember, fat cells per se are not the problem. It's the inability to respond to insulin that is. You need to know your metabolic status, not your weight. Unfortunately, at this stage at least, there isn't one number that tells you whether you are or you're not insulin resistant. So, well, you have to read the tea leaves a little and look for clues. Having said that, there are quite a few surrogate markers for insulin resistance. Each has its pros and cons. My favorite is the Tai Chi Index. I have a video on it if you want to learn more. The take-home message, no matter what you weigh, you need to know your metabolic status. If you need a little help figuring out your metabolic status, let me take a look. You can find a link in the description below. If you already know you are insulin resistant, then download the Willpower Report. It's free. In it, you'll discover 10 things you can do to improve your situation and begin the journey today to creating better body chemistry and better health. Here is the reference that I've used to tell today's story. If reclaiming your health is your hobby, but you're tired of all the health info that is biased by politics and economics and you want the real science, but you need a little help understanding it, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.